Start the regular season by selecting your season goal. Kick your season off by meeting your season goal comes with higher rewards, but also higher risk. Cool. Now, let's take a minute to see how you can improve your team. Saquon Barkley, welcome to the NFL. It's the coach. You're tuned into week one of the NFL EA Sports. Coming up, Giants fans will see the debut of their dynamic new runner, number two overall pick, Saquon Barkley. As the New York Giants are in for a test, the toughest defenses in the NFL, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll be back at halftime with a look ahead to the early game. You're back up to MetLife Stadium. Here are Brandon Godden. Charles Davis. All right, Coach, we welcome everybody to the Garden State. EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the sight of their men in blue emerging from the MetLife tunnels. We're set to go as the Giants get ready to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And, Charles, you take a look at this Giants ball club. And I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, an early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. No more training camp, no more exhibitions. The 2018 NFL season on EA Sports is underway. 
And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Ready for here in the Eli Manning. When you look at Eli Manning posted in 2007, there's plenty of cause for concern. Lowest yards per completion of his career. His top in terms of touchdowns and rising in terms of interceptions. But he's one of the fiercest competitors in the league, even if you can't tell it by his demeanor. And no, you don't hear workout program like Tom Brady and Drew Brees. But this is a guy that burns. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Telvin Smith. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. Brandon, when we sat with the offensive coach and talked about how they wanted to begin this game offensively, they talked about their script, didn't they? 10 to 15 plays, the first 10 to 15. Nowhere on the script was there throwing an interception, I have to believe. Here's Leonard Fournette, thousand-yard rusher from a year ago. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now Bortles. This one complete to Niles Paul. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A really nice game. 5 yards. Here we go. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And he'll take this into the end zone on Jacksonville. A great play there. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Jags have taken the early lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. Lambo, and it's now a 7 nothing game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. Here's Lambo out to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Giants making their way out, and at this point, you would have to think that all mentions of last year may be erased from team history, or at least that's what they want. If clearly, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, the talent on this team, too good for another 3-13 and 13 finish, right? And I think that was reflected in their draft in 2018. Because if it was an all-out rebuild, they would have drafted a quarterback at number two. Instead, they drafted Saquon Barkley. So that signals to me they want to get back to running the football and trying to punish people on offense and take the pressure off of Eli Manning. And on the defensive side of the ball, they obviously have to get better. But believe it or not, you know who can really help them there? Their head coach, Pat Shermer. Comes from a defensive family, valuable it is, and loves the toughness and the identity that a good defense can provide. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. And the offensive starters for the New York Giants. Great time to focus on a healthy group of pass catchers. How about Odell Beckham? And Evan Ingram, because health is the key for them. When they stack up against just about any threesome in the NFL. Two terrific wide receivers and a trying to get it to Beckham and it's intercepted. AJ Boye with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. 
Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. He'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively, because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jack as we begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten out. The stop for no gain brings up second and ten from the 20. On second down, here's Fournette. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times. You don't get try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Out of the backfield, it's T.J. Yeldon. That was a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. A reminder coming up at the half, we hook up with a new guy, Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis, and more importantly this year, scores and stats from around the league here in week one. So do not press that score. Throw here's income trying to get it there to D.D. Westbrook. And that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Green 80. Green 80. Green here's a carry for a former starter. This is T.J. Yeldon. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're once more. Double and this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the Jaguars send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. This will be taken at the 10. Dancing away at the 30. And here now a spin. 35 yards on the return. Picked up some good blocks as well. And it'll be giant football first and 10. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively. Obviously, two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit, like, hey, not colored jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to. Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. He'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. That one goes for 24 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Not only have they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Throwing now is Manning. He dumps it off to Barkley. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. 
Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Again, they'll throw with Manning. Open man right side is Ingram. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay winging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A good effort there, nine yards, but it's going to leave him looking at a fourth and one. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. So we've reached half on opening weekend as we'll check in for the first time with the newest member of our Madden family. It's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. We'll get started up at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly, where it was the visiting Falcons who were able to come away with the victory. The Falcons get out to a hot start as they get the road victory in their opener. From there, let's get down to Baltimore to check in on the Ravens at home at MNT Bank Stadium. And you can see they trail the visiting Buffalo Bills in that ball game. The Bills looking to get their season off on the right foot. They've got the lead on the road. Finally, let's get down to the Bayou. Check on the Saints at home at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. And that one all even as they play the visiting Bucks. Meanwhile, in our game, not a lot of offense to go around. 7-3 is our score. Will we see things open up in the second half? To find out, we get it back to our guys in the booth, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Rosas now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Gonna run the draw with Fournette. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right, you look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. He's gonna air one out. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. And a return 39-yard line. First possession, third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, 
Let's face it, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside 40. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post, but we've seen it happen. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Giants. Russell, 61 yards. And the Giants are in for six. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Rosas good with the extra point. And the lead is now 10-7. Rosas now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. He's likely still kicking himself from the interception last drive that wound up leading to a go-ahead score. And he's going to assume all that came with that one, all right? That's all on him. And he also knows he's got to erase it from his mind and get back out there. This drive, very important. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. And this has been a familiar all afternoon. Dop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll lead here to a third down. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. He finds Yeldon. Oh, he breaks a tackle and he's got an alley. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And that goes as a gain of 37 on third down. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we set for the fourth quarter. Bortles now on first down. And seeing no he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling almost on the spot. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who've had the receivers on lockdown. They'll start out on the ground in Saquon Barkley. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Yeah. 
time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Barkley already showing the ability to transform this giant running game as they come up here on first down. Barkley on first down. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Second down, here's Barkley. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. 41-yard punt. The net a little greater, though, following a loss on the return. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive... That does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. But he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. And some room to work. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember down. Bortles gives to Yeldon on the draw. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. They'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Connor Barwin in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. And with the clock ticking under 50 seconds now, he spikes it. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. He's back to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. Now Bortles, got to have this one. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. 
And that gives him now three interceptions in the game. Well, someone's locked into what they're trying to get done in the passing game. When was the last time we had someone get three in a, in a contest? 2011, wasn't it? Kurt Coleman. Oh, yeah, that's then right. Then with the Eagles. That's right. It's then against the, with the Eagles, and I believe it's against Washington and Rex Grossman. That's correct. A first down carry for Barkley. He doesn't find a ton of space following the display of quick feet down just inside the 45. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Manning gonna throw here. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And got his man complete. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Odell Beckham, 43 yards. And thanks to the interception, the Giants offense cash it in. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable but do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense, but that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. Rosas, true blue on the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Round to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. Then he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up to him. He shouldn't. This to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Throwing his Bortles. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off near the 44. And his guys are going to get the football at their own 47-yard line. And partner, this first week, this first game that we get to call together, so special every year, week one. You had the fly over the big American flag out there before the game, all the hoopla, just having football back, so special. It is an opening day, opening game. There's just nothing like it because you really build to a crescendo. But the best part for us is that crescendo lasts for a while. Opening game here, an entire season. We get into the playoffs, to the Super Bowl. I was really excited. I could barely sleep last night. I can't imagine being a player. So for the Giants, that'll be a happy locker room as they start the season 1-0. And they'll hit the road next week to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Meanwhile, for the Jaguars, they obviously fall to 0-1 with the defeat. And they'll try again next week at home against New England. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brian.
Take a minute to see how you can improve your team. Once you're ready, go ahead and select Advanced. You have grades for each position. Browse available players to improve your team. Players have contracts that are about to expire. Resign them so you don't lose them to free agency.